Hey, this is Lula, and this is the series where we take a look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. Today, we are in Idaho, and if you're surprised to see that this house is not a single potato upon the ground, then we both have some things to learn today. And if you're surprised at the price tag on this puppy, that is $30 million dollars for a five bedroom, nine bath house at only 10,444 square feet. Well, uh, I guess you've got a few things to learn about how the wealthy are buying up swaths of land in the American West, especially these remote properties. Uh, this is where they're all gonna be fucking off to live in bomb shelters and bunkers after they've destroyed the planet and killed the rest of us. So, uh, hey, if you were hoping for something a little more uplifting than Hawaii, I, uh, I think we set the bar nice and low, uh, but let's see how it goes. Uh, this is obviously, um, very modern style. Everything's very square. Uh, we've got a tennis court over here, so we're obviously not skimping on the luxury. Uh, it looks like this is a huge compound, uh, and it's probably on an even bigger swath of land. Definitely giving me the word compound, that this is, you know, some interconnected buildings. Um, I would not be surprised to see some prepper shit going on in here. The, what's interesting to me is the grading of the land where they, they obviously leveled all of this. Uh, to build, and then they've got these steps down here. So we're up on a mountain. We're close to a lake. This is definitely giving me um, bunker vibes. Oh, we've got a, a weird corporate statue out front. Uh, very generic, two interlocked rings. Uh, I feel like I'm about to walk into an office and uh, be told about Synergy. And this uh, front entryway does not give me a different impression. That actually solidifies it. Um, we've got the gates here. They are really, I mean, between these metal gates and then these metal doors, that is telling me that they are ready to keep out the zombie hordes. We've got uh, some water feature. I think this is a swimming pool, maybe, or just a water feature. But it looks like you could swim in there. It looks chlorinated. Uh, right around the front door, that's a weird place to have a pool. Um, oh, we've got the gate is monogrammed. Isn't that posh? We've got uh, some wide open doors, some indoor outdoor space. I'm sure those windows are just spectacular in the dead of winter when it is negative a billion degrees in Idaho. Um, we saw these same door styles in Hawaii, and I don't think, I don't think it tr translates that well from one place to another. Uh, I believe we are in a sitting room with way too much floor space. Let's see if we get another angle on it. Oh, nope, we are going out. We've got more swimming pool. This looks, it's got fires in it. This is so strange to me. It also looks very shallow, but maybe that's a trick of the light or something. Um, having these weird fires. Do you have to like wade through the water to light them? Or is there like a long stick? Like someone still has to build the fire, right? Unless it's like gas powered. It's weird to me. It's very weird to me. Oh, this is... This is one of those pools that pours off over the edge. Uh, very, very trendy. Uh, yeah, it goes down here into this little trough area. And the pool still looks very shallow to me. This looks like a wading pool or just a gigantic fountain. We've got a couple of outdoor sitting areas. We've got some hedges over here. This is kind of wild. Let's, let's try to take a better look inside. All right, here we go. This is another angle on that room. And it is indeed this, I mean, this is like a hotel lobby. 
It's a huge, wide open space. Um, everything is like the modern furniture that doesn't dispel the hotel vibe. The, oh, we, uh, we really hope they got this picture from an indigenous person, but, uh, I'm not feeling optimistic about that, bro. Um, other than that, we got this kind of generic art here. I think it's the separate rugs for each sitting area is really what gives it that whole hotel vibe. All right, we're in one of these sitting areas. These chairs are crammed together very tightly. Um, it, it, this is, it's almost like a closed square. You know, you've got even got this chair. And like, there's only one way in and out of here, really, which, I don't know, feels a little a little weird to me if I was going to go sit in there and we have to like file in single file and I everyone has to walk past this one dude in order to get out. It looks like a, a vague attempt at chuggy knife handing a couple pillows was made and then the rest were left. So I don't know if that's better or worse. Who's to say? Uh, they've got a grand piano because of course they do, honestly. If I had the floor space, I would also. I kind of like this stonework on the interior here. That I'll give it. And, and the windows are, the high up windows here are nice to make sure that you've got um, plenty of natural light coming in. Yeah, this does not look like somewhere that someone would live. This looks like a hotel lobby to me. I don't know how else to describe it. I feel like I'm I'm just repeating myself. But even these these side tables, this long hallway here, this random seating area here, this is come out here and wait for your Uber or the shuttle to the wedding and the entire wedding party is scattered through the lobby or something like that. Here's the other sitting area, equidistant identical chairs with chuggy knife hand pillows. Spectacular, spectacular. Okay. Uh, we are now in the kitchen and we've got a couple of stoves. I said, maybe this is like convection oven or something very far apart. This huge section of, I mean, first of all, these cabinets are weird looking to begin with, the the flat, plasticky white. But having this giant section here that doesn't seem to be a drawer makes me suspect that it might be a hidden refrigerator. Uh, I'm not sure, though. We will see if we can find one elsewhere. Oh, we are in the dining area, which offers three three dining tables for you to choose from because we've got this one outdoors. I don't know why they are insisting on this whole indoor outdoor thing. You're in Idaho. It gets warm enough to leave the the windows open in like May and then it's mosquito season July and August and then it's too cold to leave the windows open by like the end of September if not earlier than that. Uh, you're also, you're in the mountains, so the season's probably even shorter than that. Um, seems like false advertising to me. The, the two adjacent tables, it just, it feels like a restaurant. Like, and it, well, and it feels like an, either you've got like the smaller family that just, you pick a table and then you've got this awkward empty table next to you most nights or when you do have like a lot of people you have to kind of make this awkward decision of who's sitting at what table like I don't want to put down name cards for a normal dinner party that's weird uh, here's the outdoor table and um, beautiful views beautiful views I'll give it that you don't have to work too hard on the interior design because you've got windows and the windows look out on that which is spectacular um although i might suggest that you want the inside to
to be beautiful because that will turn into just white, just pure white snow uh, for a lot of the year. And then you might need some color indoors. I love this. Is this turf? I believe that is just fake grass turf right there. Spectacular. All right, here's inside the weird dining area. We've got a floating buffet uh, with pretentious shit on it. Candelabras, chalices, bowl of fruit. Okay, whatever. Um, back in the kitchen, we're not going in any sort of discernible order. I still don't see a refrigerator. I think it was that weird square on the wall. Uh, we got a sink, which is awkwardly far from where the ovens and possibly refrigerator are over here. Uh, you've also got these like cookbooks set up between the work surface area and the ovens. Also, where's the stove? I haven't seen a stove yet. And and okay, we're we're no longer in the kitchen. It's still a mystery to us. This is that hallway uh, with the weird random chair. What is this room for? Why there's a single chair at this conference table facing a sitting area, which is only facing the chair at the con. Are you giving us speech? Is this lecture are we homeschooling here and the kids sit here and dad sits here with the tech i don't know what is the space all right um here we've got this we is this is that a fireplace or is that just a crawl like you can crawl through there to the next room that's so weird because it's too clean it, it's just clean, polished marble. I bet it is supposed to be a fireplace, but as it is right now, it's just a portal to another room. I mean, I I kind of get the the vibe of like, oh, you just set a fire in here and then it's it's a fire for both rooms. But also, it means that you can never have a private conversation in this room because you don't know who's standing over in that room and vice versa. We've got an office over here with a little conference table. And, okay, this is dangerous. This is, a, first of all, that's not comfortable to work on. Um, this doesn't even look like a, a, an operable workspace. This this looks like the, the workspace that you have when you have, like, a practical hands-on job. And then you just have to come over here to punch in some numbers. And then you go back to, like, doing on-your-feet stuff. Um, that's not a comfy stool. This isn't a cozy office. And you've got this lounge chair on a covered patio in the beautiful, wide open Idaho wilderness, mere feet away through a clear window so that you can see that temptation at all times. That's dangerous. I would never work. We've got, I believe this water feature wraps around the whole house. I'm curious to see how that kind of works. And you've got these, it looks like you have to go over these walkways to get across it, which that looks really easy to fall off of. Um, especially, you know, you're outside, you're running around. That's, uh, to me, an accident waiting to happen. Do you think that's a pain in the ass for like the seven months out of the year that it's cold and you have to drain this off and it just becomes a canal of empty space to fall in and probably fills with snow. Probably you would never want to shovel it because why would you? Um, so it's just two feet of snow to fall into or if you're really lucky it just ice accumulates in there and then you fall off of there because this is icy also and then you slip on there and then you break your head on that that's that's how you die in this house oh good we've got a sitting area in the bedroom and uh you know what for once i will say i don't think this 
room is big enough that it needs a sitting area. It doesn't seem necessary to me. I think they just put it in there because they've seen sitting areas in so many other rich people's houses and they thought that it was a status symbol and not a sign of interior design gone wrong. I can't really tell what that artwork is, but my, my heart tells me it's problematic. Uh, we've got a TV here so that you can truly destroy your sleep hygiene. Of course, everything is white so that when it's winter and everything's white out there, you go blind. That's, uh, that's really the idea here. Oh, we've got a gigantic mirror on the wall next to the bed. Um, not going to not going to tell you what that's for. You can figure it out. All right. And we've got the I assume this is the master bath with a big ass walk in closet slash changing room over there. Looks like we got a big tub. Yeah, everything's just very sleek and modern. Um, and big old windows so that it's nice and cold in the winter. I really hope those windows are well insulated. Otherwise, this entire place would use so much fuel to heat. Uh, we got a workout room with only cardio, it seems. We got, yeah, we got an elliptical, a treadmill, and a rowing machine. Uh, and then a couple of dinky little weights. So we are not, we're not building muscle in this household. We are, we are just trying to stave off our inevitable heart attacks. I think this is the same bathroom that we were looking at before. These pictures are not in a very cohesive order. Uh, we got a gigantic shower and it looks like that might be another closet slash dressing room. So I'm guessing the master bedroom is over here and then you go through one closet or the other to get to the bathroom. So here we've got a nice sitting room with a TV. <gasps> a TV over the fireplace. It's such a good idea. You have to replace this TV constantly. Um, we've, we've got it. I'm so happy. TV over the fireplace. There it is. Okay, we've got this angled couch thing facing it. Um, the ceiling details, these rafters, those are pretty cool. Of course, we have a moose on the wall. It's Idaho. I'll allow it. Uh, the weird modern furniture. The, the white walls, they seem really crisp and beautiful now because we've got these giant windows looking out on green and blue but the for most of the year they are looking out on blinding white put put some other colors in here put some other colors in here all right we've got a bedroom uh with wide open doors so that you feel like you're sleeping outside um, which may sound fun and outdoorsy right now, except there's, there's no screen on this. Mosquito season is pretty bad, unless they're too high up in the mountains, maybe. Yeah, I would not feel comfortable sleeping with, with everything this wide open. And again, it's gonna be cold soon. It, it, like, I don't care how well insulated these doors are. That's all just going to be draft city unless you keep the curtains closed all winter, in which case you will never see the sun again and you will have seasonal affective disorder and become horrifically depressed. All right, we've got this little back porch area. I like this big chair. It looks cozy. It looks fun. I'll take it. Uh, another bedroom with a giant mirror next to it. What are these people into? And here's a bathroom. And oh, we haven't seen this in this series yet, but I know that it's a thing. The toilet is in toilet prison because you can't let people know that you shit. That is for peasants. 
so the toilet has to go in a separate room. But what's interesting is that this separate room is not all that private. Um, it's clear glass up top, fogged glass down low, which like, I know you're probably only having like close family in here while you're in there, but I still like, I'd be fine because I'm short and my head's going to be below that level, but maybe a tall person would be making eye contact or something. I'm not sure where we are in the house right now, but I'm still getting hotel vibes from this. You know, I, I do like the interior stonework, but with, the, I mean, the, the side table with the lamps and the, the random chair. Who sits in that chair? What's that there for? Um, all right, we're back outside again. I think we are out front. Um, and that's the gate to keep the zombie hordes out. We've got a, another entryway, though. If you're trying to sneak in with your guillotine, you could try that one. Uh, we've got another sitting area here. Another TV over the fireplace. We hate our technology and we want it to die. We've got TV over the fireplace. Spectacular. We've got another sectional couch with a seating area that's just a little too tightly arranged. I mean, you really have to crawl through this alleyway here. Here's another angle on it. This is open to the kitchen area. Is that a different kitchen? It might be. I don't know. Um, we've got a little breakfast nook over here. That looks cute, I guess. This is not a full kitchen. This is like a, a separate breakfast kitchen or something. I don't know. We've got cabinets for stuff. So maybe snacks in here. We've got a Keurig and a toaster. Um, maybe this house is just so big that going all the way across the house to the kitchen is impractical. So you have to keep rations in the auxiliary uh non-kitchen that's special that's that's pretty special i do like the little pop of color they've got here this is probably the most color we've seen in this house so far that's awfully sad uh because all the walls are still white uh and that's gray to match the stone and here we've got a view from above. It looks like there's maybe some access up here on the roof, but it doesn't look like it's being used for anything. We've got another seating area. We've got, yeah, these terraces of greenery are very interesting because I don't know if maybe they've specifically chosen greenery that doesn't need a lot of upkeep or if they're actually forcing some poor landscaper to come and like risk life and limb shuffling along these stone walls to trim the hedges into perfect squares. Um, let's hope it's not that one. Another bedroom with a giant door of windows that are going to be cold in the winter and no colors in sight. Another bathroom with very little color. Oh, all right. This is colorful. We've been looking for some color. It looks like maybe this is, are we getting into a kid section? I see some children's faces here. Um, you know what? Even if the parents are willing to live in a bleak sea of white, I I would appreciate that they let the children have a little bit of enrichment, you know, try to prevent their... Oh, but, but here it is. I was too hopeful. I was too hopeful after Georgia with the people that actually treated their children well. Um, this is... That's six beds. Do you see there's a bunk bed here, a bunk bed here, a bunk bed here. They're sleeping the kids six to a room. I know this is only a five bedroom house, but it's a huge house 
It's a very expensive house. I think you could have afforded to convert some space so that your kids didn't have to sleep six to a room. That's awful. How many do you think snore? I bet it's at least two. That's infuriating. If I was these children and my parents had this much money and this much house and they stuck me in this little cubby hole, look, this is the closest they get to having their own room is that this curtain can pull shut on their bed. That's so sad. I am outraged for those children. Oh, look, they get a fun bathroom that they all have to share. Or is this, is this even a bathroom? This is just, what is this? It's a mirror with chairs and cups. Is this a cult thing? Do they have to come in here and do their makeup as children? What is happening? Oh, we've got a playroom. Oh, and we've got all of the children's faces on the wall. I am creeped out. I am supremely creeped out by all of this. Um, oh, I'm getting cult vibes. I'm getting, I'm getting quiverful vibes. I, mm, you know how I was talking in, in the Georgia video about how all the, all the good, warm, fuzzy, loving family vibes I was getting here. I'm getting the opposite here. I feel like these children are being trained to be obedient little psychopaths. And here is the property. We've got some gardens. That's the prepper stuff right there. Yep, here it is. They're, I believe, trying to grow their own food there. I don't know what this building is for. Are they going to show us? Oh, it looks like this is an art studio of some sort. We've got snacks. Interesting. This is not what I was expecting. This is an interesting turn. We've got this. All right, we've got one art easel. We've got some succulents here. Maybe this is like an activity pavilion. Oh, we've got the tennis court. Of course, we've got the uh, gigantic tennis court. Need that. Um, and this little sitting area. This house is a tennis court, but only one bedroom for six children. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, this house has six boat docks. That's a lot. All right, and here's a little fire pit area on the way down to the boat docks. Six boat docks. Does, is that one for each child? Does each child get a boat? And when they get tired of listening to their siblings breathe at night, they can just take the boat out and sleep on the lake. Is that the plan? There's the boat dock. All right, that's this house. Um, oh, you know what? I, I was not that riled about this house until I saw that. That is a huge pet peeve of mine that these people have so, so much and yet what what did their kids get? Their, their kids get this one sad, colorless little playroom, which like, yes, there's colors in the pictures on the wall. Paint a wall. Paint a fucking wall. You can do it. I promise. It doesn't matter that it's screwing up your aesthetic. Um, you know, at least they've got walls painted in here. But you know what? Yellow. Yellow is not a good color for a children's bedroom. Studies show that it increases anxiety and babies in yellow rooms cry more. So they are intentionally deranging their children. Um, look at all this yellow. They just want their children anxious and deranged and not sleeping. That's what they want. This is, oh, those, those are the bunk. I think those might be the bunk beds. I don't know. Um... Everything about this, like from the compound vibe to the the sterile hotel look to the the remote disconnected area, like I I doubt those kids are going to a school. Like, right? They're probably homeschooled. We saw that homeschool room. Um yeah, no, everything about this place is telling me that they kidnapped those children 
and are brainwashing them into a cult. That is that is the vibe that I get from this house. Um, horrific. Horrific. All right. That's Iowa. There's weird shit going on out there. Um, I don't know if you've heard. It's not just potatoes. It's also militant preppers and rich people like this who hate their children. Uh, if you saw anything that I missed while I was going on an extended rant uh, that I probably didn't need to go on, leave it in the comments. Uh, you can leave comments about other stuff as well, or you could just like or subscribe the video. You know the drill. And other than that, have a good one.